You guys, Mike here. In this video, I'm going to teach you why your damage sucks for Greatsword. Okay, so the thing about Greatsword is you're trying to fit as much damage within a certain time window as possible. And you can do that in so many different ways for Greatsword. Uh, Greatsword, you can do charging, you can do uh, charging for your draw slash or your charge slash. You can do charging for your strong charge slash. Uh, you can do combos with the draw slash into strong charge slash. By the way, I'll leave a link to the description in my previous greatsword video where I explain why strong charge slash is sort of the central move of greatsword. And believe it or not, in the older monster hunters, strong charge slash was actually your strongest move because true charge slash just didn't even exist back then. It was only introduced in the monster hunter world. Okay, so how do we figure out what's the best damaging combo that you do for Greatsword, even though there's just so many options you have for Greatsword? Well, thing is, uh, you can't. You have to do it very analytically. And what I did here was I did a frame data analysis for all the different moves that you can do with Greatsword. And I even included some focus level three here just to mix things up a little bit. And you'll f there's some interesting findings here. <laughs> so how do you read all this mess right here? On the left, I have DPS. And on the right chart, I have combo time. And I have the combos here that you can do labeled right here. In order to fit everything on the screen, you can see that it's color coded. And this combo here, for example, applies to this chart here, this bar here, and this bar here on the DPS chart. Now, a few important things for all the combos I have here, I included a roll into a sheath. And that's important because it's part of the greatsword damage rotation. If you're not rolling and sheathing, you're you're not only giving up your best form of defense, which is sprinting, but you're not really gaining much either because it actually doesn't cost you much to roll and sheath and then go into a draw slash compared to just staying unsheathed and just going into charge slashes over and over. It actually takes a long time to do an unsheathed char charge slash because the hunter has a sword hold held out in front. They have to take time to bring it up behind them and then come back forward to land the charge slash. It actually takes the same amount of time to do a roll sheath draw slash as it does to do just a re regular charge slash. All right, and just for a nomenclature here, I have DS and various numbers after it. So DS stands for draw slash and the number after it stands for the charge level. And you may be wondering why I only have draw slashes and not unsheathed charge slashes. That That's that's just to simpl simplify things and make the graph smaller because it's not really relevant. If you want to do this analysis with unsheathed charge slashes, you can do that. It's just all of these bars would be extended by a constant amount, right? So they would all be offset by a constant amount. And you can see after every combo, I have roll, which is represented by R and sheath, which is represented by SH. All right, so how do you read this chart and what are the main takeaways from it? So you have to first look at combo time. Combo time is just the amount of time it takes to do this combo. And it's in seconds here. So you have to look at different combos that take the same amount of combo time and then you compare their DPS. So let me give you an example, all right? So let's take the fastest move in Greatsword, which is the draw slash. So right here, draw slash in light blue. It takes about 2.1 or 2.3 seconds to do. And its DPS is a little bit more than 80 right here. Okay, now let's take the a very long combo. Let's take uh, this one right here. Uh, draw slash level three into strong charge slash level three, roll sheep. And you can see it takes more than eight seconds to do with focus zero and quick sheath zero. And you can see his DPS is about 115. So a smooth brain person will think, oh, well, this DPS for draw slash three into strong charge three has more DPS than the draw slash, which is only at 80. So I should always do draw slash three into strong charge slash three over a draw slash. And that is the complete incorrect way to look at it because you cannot compare these two combos to each other because they take different amounts of time to do. If the monster gives you a window that you can only do a draw slash zero, this is your only option. You can only do this move. You literally cannot do this, this long combo right here. You're just gonna get hit and that's gonna cause your DPS to suffer. Remember, getting hit is the biggest hit to your DPS as well. So that's where the colors come in. That's why I color coded everything because the colors represent different combos that take about the same amount of time. 
So let's move on to the next example. So, okay, I have three green bars here, right? And this is what I identified as the combos that take about 4.5 seconds. You can see they line up right here, 4.5 seconds. Now, because these three combos take approximately the same amount of time to do, then we can compare their DPS to each other. This is the only way to compare DPS for combos. Now, okay, let's look at it right here. So which is the best DPS combo for these three green bars? Well, you can see it's actually this one right here. The draw slash zero into strong charge slash one into roll into sheet. By the way, strong charge slash doesn't have a strong charge slash zero. It always starts at charge level one and it goes from level one to two to three. There's no strong charge slash zero. So you can see his DPS is at 120 or the draw slash three. So if you're charging a draw slash three, it only has a 90 DPS. And if you have a draw slash three, but you're using focus level three, it actually improves to 100. So that's about a 10% DPS gain for focus three, for draw slash three. By the way, your biggest gains from focus three are only gonna be for charge level three moves, which will save you about 21 frames for draw slash three and strong charge slash three. All right, so DPS wise, if you're given, if the monster gives you a 4.5 second window, your most optimal combo is draw slash zero into strong charge slash one roll sheath. There's just no disputing that. <laughs> that, is, that is the best combo. Now, there are obviously exceptions to this, like if you are calculating part damage and you're planning to flinch the monster on the next hit, then you can effectively eliminate the monster's attack window and therefore extend your attack window. I'm not talking about that. This is just looking at the raw numbers just so we can get a baseline. All right, so let's look at the next window. So the six second window, you have draw slash zero and two strong charge slash three. And you're gonna see a common theme here. Your biggest damage gains for Great Sword don't actually come from charging, believe it or not, which is ironic because this is something that a lot of people feel you need to do with Great Sword. That, that's not the case. Your biggest gains from Great Sword actually come from just landing hits. That's where a large majority of your damage comes from. So landing that initial draw slash and then following up with either a strong charge slash one or getting some little extra damage by charging your strong charge slash into charge into level three. You can squeeze out a little bit more damage, but you can see the biggest gains are just from landing hits. Your combo is really only two hits. It's only draw slash into strong charge slash. So you should always be thinking, okay, how do I land draw slash first? And then how do I land that strong charge slash? And then if I wanna squeeze out a little bit extra damage, then I can start charging my strong charge slash a little bit. But the most important thing is land the hits. Here's a common trap that a lot of beginners fall into with Greatsword, and it's overcharging in the sense that they're trying to greed charges. Say a newbie hunter, they hit their draw slash zero, and then they go into a strong charge slash. And let's say they get greedy and they try to go for strong charge slash level two or level three, but the monster already moved away and they miss that strong charge slash completely when they could have just hit the strong charge slash level one right here. They would have gained so much damage just from landing that strong charge slash hit. Because they missed the strong charge slash, their DPS probably got a 50% hit. I think it's a little bit more than 50% hit to the DPS. Let's go into these orange bars here. And there's an important point I want to make with these orange bars. They're both orange, but they're technically different colors. So because they're different colors, that means they're considered different combos with different combo times. So you cannot really compare them DPS wise. Now, here's the important thing I want to explain with this is that these orange bars, they don't really matter. And the reason they don't really matter is because look how much time they take to do in <laughs> seven seconds and 8.6 seconds. The monster will never, never, ever, ever, ever give you a seven second or an 8.6 second opening. The monster always attacks on 1.5, three second, or a five second time frame. And it's never gonna give you this amount of time. So these combos are actually kind of useless. Now you may be asking yourself, well, in multiplayer, the monster may not be aggroed to me, so I may actually have time to do this. And the answer is still a resounding no, you still do not have time to do this. And the reason it's a no is because even though the monster is not aggro to you and is always focused on a different hunter, the monster is always going to be moving between attacks. So every attack 
even though it switches from other hunter to other hunter, he's, his parts are going to be moving. So you're going to be whiffing these, these combos right here. So th it's still useless even in multiplayer, even though the monster is not angry to you. Let's talk about these bars up here. So these bars up here and these ones also are just um, variations on the draw slash. So the first thing I want to talk about is these two dark blue bars. These two bars are draw slash one. And the first one down here is just draw slash one with focus zero. And this one up here is draw slash one with focus three and quick sheath level zero. By the way, quick sheath in all cases saves you about 12 frames, which is one sixth of a second. And it's not that significant. It can help, but it's you're going to be hard pressed to fit quick sheath in, especially in progression and gear sets. So it's probably really only on a fatality set or end game set that can fit quick sheath in and the benefits are not that good for greatsword but it's however you value 10 frames in my personal opinion I don't think 10 frames is really worth it for the amount you're trying to fit in your armor set okay the thing about draw slash level one is that in monster hunter world the damage that draw slash one does is actually the same amount of damage as a draw slash zero but it's in a different time window right it's on three second time window whereas the draw slash is kind of on that two second time window so while you technically do not compare these draw slash ones to draw slash zero this is sort of an exception here because because they do the same amount of total damage so it's actually never a good idea to do a draw slash one because you can always just do a draw slash zero and then you can already roll early and sheath and you can get a head start on defense. And this also is verified in the DPS as well because you can, you can see the DPS for a draw slash zero is so much more better than a draw slash one. It has a DPS of 80 compared to a, a pitiful DPS of 60. So the second main takeaway from this is never do draw slash one. You're better off just do, just do draw slash zero and then already start sheeting. Now, most people will end up doing a draw slash one because they're trying to go for a draw slash two or a draw slash three, but they get caught off guard. They say, oh crap, I need to, I need to start sheeting already. So they bail out on their draw slash, which is fine, but it's just not optimal. All right, here we have draw slash two in red. And you can see it has its own time window. So it's at the four second time window and has a DPS of 80, which matches the draw slash zero. And it's pretty good if you can fit a draw slash two in. Since draw slash two is its own time window and you have time to do it, you should always try to go for draw slash two. So if you're trying to go for a sub four second attack window and trying to squeeze out extra damage, you're always in the back of your mind trying to think, okay, how do I get to draw slash two? Because that's how, where I'm gonna get my most of my damage for that window. And you can see here, you actually don't gain much frames from focus three for draw slash two. For draw slash two, you only gain about 10 frames from focus three. But like I said earlier, the main gains for focus three are mainly for draw slash level three, where you get back about 21 frames or a third of a second. So the main takeaways are land as much hits as possible to do the majority of your damage. This includes draw slash and strong charge slash. If you're gonna go for a charge for your draw slash, try to get to at least level two. The debate on whether you do draw slash three versus draw slash zero into strong charge slash one should always do draw slash zero into strong charge slash one because it just does more damage here than a charge slash three. The only argument for doing charge slash three is it literally takes half as much sharpness because draw slash zero into strong charge slash, you are spending two points of sharpness, whereas in draw slash three, you're only spending one point of sharpness. So there could be an argument there, but from a DPS perspective, it's always better to do draw slash zero into strong charge slash one. Hope you guys enjoyed that video. We'll probably extend this to true charge slash and all of the other great sort of moves like jumping wide slash, as well as strong wide slash, wide slash, and maybe even tackle. So subscribe if you're interested. We're gonna do this for wilds as well. Anyways, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching.